Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Dark Hills Films, the show dedicated to teach you how to do the best visual effects with modern films with low budgets. And today, we're going to be doing this. Drop it! No, 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 no not that. This. Okay, so for this effect, we won't be using any third party plugin, so we're gonna let's keep get on Okay, so we are now in After Effects, and here I have my comp. It's basically just my keyed out subject, and I added a hue and saturation to a colorized blue. So uh, I'll show you guys why in a little bit. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to start tracking our eyes. I would encourage the people watching this to play with the settings, play with the looks. That's what this is about. It's not really about following. There's no right or wrong way of doing something. It's just taking a concept and pretty much creating what you guys think looks good. In this case, I changed my subject to a blue color with a hue and saturation, simple as that. So, I once I tracked my both eyes, what I did was I created a white solid and I basically just created a mask around one of the eyes and uh, just a rough mask. And then I'm gonna feather that mask around five pixels. So, also I'm gonna set a keyframe on the mask position and bring out the opacity around 50. Also change the blending mode on that layer to a soft light. Now, I don't know if you guys ever run into this, but uh, just in case, here I don't have my parenting columns. I don't know why, sometimes it gets removed automatically on After Effects, I don't know why, but in case you run into this, you can just right click on top of your layers and uh, choose columns and set and uh, click on the parent and it will pop up as so. All I did was I parented my white solid to my right null and then I started setting keyframes for my mask. Okay guys, so you basically don't need to parent this uh, this layer to your nulls, um, yet we're going to need these nulls later, so that's why they were created. And uh, basically we're just going to start setting up a few keyframes, bring your opacity down to about 50%. And uh, basically we're going to start animating this, this mask. Then just set up a few keyframes for the mask opacity. This timing is really up to you wherever your, um, wherever you guys want this effect to start uh, pretty much kicking in. Next thing is uh, we're basically going to repeat this step, creating a new mask for, this, for the other eye. And same steps, just animate the mask, set up a few keyframes, and then also set up a few keyframes for the mask opacity. So then we have these uh, sort of whitish looking eyes. Next thing I do is I create a new composition and I created a black solid. I personally don't even know why. Uh, like I said, I was just, uh, this is all about experimenting and uh, what you guys are seeing on your screen is me recording my screen as uh, I was trying to recreate this, this effect. So I created a new solid and then I brought two images of these weird textures that I just stole from the web. And uh, one first texture was set up to color dodge. Second texture was just adjusted to the size and set, um, the blending mode was changed to a lighter color and then I pre-composed both of them. Next thing I did is the mask that I originally made on my first black solid. I copied it to my pre-composed layer and uh, here, um, like I said, it's just experimenting with the with the composition. I set up a few keyframes for the mask expansion around 10, and then you want to bring it out to zero. 
that way you start getting a look as it's sinking inside of the of the circle and pretty much is uh, coming from the outside. I don't see the uh, the mask expanding in my in my main comp because the composition for the that I created for this uh, for this element was uh, on a different timing. So what I did is I went back to that composition and I just changed the time on it uh, and set up new keyframes for the for the mask expansion and. my element into the main composition. I position it, scale it to fit the eye. The position your element where you guys want your eye to be. At that point, you parent this element to one of your nulls, either to the right, to the left. Like I said, I created both nulls. But I only end up using one. I recommend you use both either way. So here, it's basically just adjusting the timing of that element. That way, the eyes start changing in a certain time. I did is on those elements I just created a rough mask that way they stay within the shape of the eye and I feathered that mask around five pixels then I then it's just pretty much animating with a few keyframes that mask so it starts following the eye across the time and then I repeat the same process on the second eye So basically this effect is tracking positioning elements. Next thing I did, I said duplicated that null object to the, which they were parented and it renamed different. It renamed right R null two, at which at that point I selected my two elements and I parent them to the new null. That way I can pre-compose them all together and they follow the null in a pre-composition. And I will explain this is why in a little bit. So in this new pre-composition, I, I go to my layer menu, and then I add on the on the layer style, I add an inner glow. So this inner glow, if I would added it in the first uh, elements, which were just the circles, it would added a glow across around the circle instead of around the shape of the eye, which is the masks. Now change your blending mode on your, your inner shadow to multiply and change your opacity to 100 and also change your size to zero next thing i did is i created a new solid color black and i named it shadow shut your layer down and draw a rough mask pretty much just replicating the shadow of the hood if your if your subject's not using a hood then there's no need to create a, a shadow in this case my subject was using a hood so I wanted to replicate that shadow and add it to the eyes and basically make it more dramatic. Next thing I do is I just simply animate the mask to start following the shadow, the original shadow that was that's already there. And then just animate it with a few keyframes. Also as my subject turns, I want to start bringing the opacity on, the, on my mask to zero. setting up a keyframe at, at zero and a few frames after is bringing my mask opacity up to 100. Now, at, 
this point I start, it's time to start bringing our background. So I got this background, it's just an abandoned warehouse, and I also stole this from the web. Uh, so what I did is I copied the hue and saturation that I originally applied to my subject, and I pasted it on my background layer. That way my background layer also turns blue. Well, I did said we weren't going to be using any third-party plugins. In my case, I wanted to try this new plugin that I just recently got, which is BCC9. I will be talking about it in, my, in a future video. In your case, you could, if you don't have BCC9, you could just simply apply a fast blur. I duplicated that layer and I deleted that BCC lens blur. On that second duplicate without the lens blur, I created a squared mask. I created a squared mask and then I changed my, my mask blending mode to subtract. I also brought up my feather up to 100 or so. That will depend on you or the image that you're using. Then I went back to the layer that I applied the blur to and I brought up the, the amount of blur higher. Basically, this is just to give some depth to my background layer. Once upon a time. If you've seen my previous tutorials, I really like to play around with the 3D elements. So what I did was I pre-composed my background and I pre-composed my subject or all the elements above, just creating the subject and the background. I, create, I made them 3D layers, created a new camera, changed the two views, that way you can start, I can see above my items. I scaled them up just so I can fit my screen. I, so I moved them back in C-Space and just adjusted the scale so they can fit my camera view. Next thing I did was I went, my, I went to my first frame and I set up a keyframe on my camera position. I went to my last frame and I moved it back in C-Space to give it some sort of camera movement. So once that's done and a few more color correction elements, I ended up with something like this. the breakdown of what we just did. In this case, I didn't go through the green screening. Again, there's already too many tutorials on green screen. And we ended up with this. All right, guys, so that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you guys liked it and maybe learned something from it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It helps out a lot. Also, if you guys have any suggestions for any future facts or any future tutorials, post them in the comments below. I'll be more than glad to recreate them and show you how to do them. Also make sure to follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Again, thank you guys for stopping by. I'm Sean Garris and I'll see you guys next time. Drop it.